It's Booty Quake here from Roller Derby Athletics. In today's prehab video, I'm gonna teach you how to engage your core. Engage your core. You hear this all the time, right? Probably your roller derby coach has said it to you. Maybe you've been at some kind of fitness class or yoga and somebody has said, okay, engage your core before you do this. Well, what the heck does that even mean? Does that mean flex my abs, suck in my stomach, puff out my stomach, right? It's really confusing and it's a super vague term. So I'm here today to teach you how to find the muscle contraction needed to engage your core for the purpose of training, working out, and skating. Having a strong core is obviously super important for roller derby because it helps us keep balanced, it helps us have really strong hits, and good lateral movement. So if we can train how to engage our core and then strengthen those muscles, we are going to make ourselves better on the track. Today I'm going to teach you a super simple move that teaches you how to recruit a very important muscle in your core called your transverse abdominis. And once we've learned that muscle and figured out what it feels like to engage it, then I'm going to show you a few exercises you can do in a 10 minute routine or less to strengthen your core muscles from there. So let's get started. Okay, I want you to do this along with me uh, because it's just gonna be this super easy trick and it just is gonna illuminate for you exactly what I'm talking about when I say engage your core. So lie back, put your knees up into a tabletop position. So your um, shins should not be dangling and not be way up here, but they should be parallel to the floor. And you can do this near a mirror if you want to check your form. All right, then you're going to place your hands on the front of your thighs, and you're simply going to resist against yourself. So I'm going to push this way with my hands, and I'm going to resist in this direction with my legs. So I'm not going to let my hands push my legs away. Okay? So here we go. I'm going to do this for a count of eight. and rest. Now as I do that, I've got my low back pressed into the floor, so there isn't a space where I can uh, stick a quarter under my low back during that movement. So if you tried that with me, then you will have noticed, you will have felt an engagement kind of deep inside your abdomen, okay? It's not the six pack muscles, it's not the muscles that you feel when you're doing a crunch or a sit up, it's something a little different, okay? That is your transverse abdominus working. So to recruit that muscle and to teach it, hello, it's time to work for me, uh, I recommend that you do this little exercise that we just did before every time you put your skates on and before you work out. So we're going to do three sets of counting to eight, eight seconds, okay? So I'm going to do another one right now. And relax. And each time you do it, you can try to uh, push with your hands and resist with your knees a little bit harder, okay? So you're waking this up and you're getting it really revved up. Okay, our last one. And that's the trick. Great. Now that we have figured out how to turn on and engage our transverse abdominis, we are going to move on to the exercises to strengthen it and its fellow core muscles. But first, I just wanted to let you know that this rad tank top that I'm wearing is from the Lifestyle Collection at Pivot Star. And if you want some groovy gear to go with your athletic lifestyle, then you can shop online at pivotstar.com. All right, let's check out the workout. All right, ready to strengthen your newfound core muscles? I hope so. Here's the first exercise. It's called a dead bug. Here's how it goes. You're gonna get into that same position you were in, and you're gonna drop one foot at a time and return it to the starting point, and drop the other foot and return to the starting point. Note that it's not a bicycle, so you're not moving both feet at the same time, okay? One at a time. Exhale as you lower. Because that further helps you to engage your TBA. All right, so we're gonna do this for 60 seconds. I'm gonna start a little timer. If you 
want to, you can lift your head up as you do this, but it's not necessary. I also want you to notice that this is not a race. It's not about doing max reps in a minute. It's about doing the best reps you can in 60 seconds. Next up, we are gonna do cat cow. And this is one that you may have seen if you've ever taken a yoga class. This is very popular and it feels good. So to do cat cow, I actually like to call this angry cat, sexy cat. So this is your angry cat and this is your sexy cat. So for sexy cat, uh, your hips balanced right over your knees, point your tail towards the ceiling, let your stomach sag, let your back sway, and try to open up your chest a little bit and tip your chin up a little bit towards the ceiling as you exhale. Sorry, inhale. And then exhale, suck your belly button towards the ceiling, tuck your tail under, relax your head, push the floor away from your knees and your hands, and then switch back. Next one up is bicycles. <clears throat> We're gonna do this one for 60 seconds too. So I'm gonna set my timer. So you've probably seen these before in some form or another. When you do this with me, I want you not to focus on speed at all. In a minute, you should probably be doing 20 to 25 bicycles. What I want you to focus on is the twist. I want you to twist really strongly to each side, okay? You're gonna keep your low back pressed into the floor the entire time. And notice where my legs are going. Uh, my knees are staying on parallel tracks. My knees aren't swinging out to the sides. Um, and to make this harder, I can outstretch my lower leg closer to the floor as I do my bicycles. And to make it easier, uh, I can put them closer, uh, more vertical, okay? So this one's easier, like so and this one is harder. All right, hopefully you were following along and doing those for the full minute. All right, next up, I'm checking my notes. We are gonna do something called plank ups. We're gonna do this for 60 seconds as well. Um, and I'm gonna show you in a second a, a variation on this if you've got an upper body injury and you can't do a plank, okay? So this movement is kind of like going from a plank to a downward dog in yoga and you're going to take a plank position from your hands and then you're going to imagine a string in your tailbone that is um, being pulled up towards the ceiling. So from this nice strong plank position you're going to lift your butt to the ceiling and then come back to plank and butt to ceiling and back to plank and you repeat that. Now Practical application of this, where does this come in handy? If you've ever fallen on your face in roller derby and then wanted to get up real quick. All right, <laughs> that's the motion, right? You have to be able to use your core to pick your butt up and get yourself going. So, ready for one minute of plank ups. Exhale on the way up. Inhale back to plank. Next up is the V sit. We're going to do three progressions of this. So if uh, any one of these progressions feels too challenging and you can't do it with the form that I describe, then you just stick with the version previous to that, okay? So the very first one, we're gonna progress to a V-sit where we're gonna hold this. But to get there, we're gonna start with a hold with our heels on the floor, so a little bit less uh, tension. Uh, and what we're gonna focus on is keeping your back, your low back, nice and straight. So I want you to see the difference between my pelvis being rounded and my tailbone pointing at the wall over there. 
and my pelvis being pointed straight down at the floor, uh, and I'm kind of tilted up onto, as they call it, my sits bones, uh, and I have a very flat low back here. So that's the position we're going for, and we're going to hold this for 30 seconds. Okay, the next progression to add a little bit of level of difficulty, if you're ready, is to simply drag your feet in and out, back and forth, just a few inches, probably six inches total. So um, again, you're gonna keep that flat, flat low back position the whole time. And if you're not able to maintain that, then uh, return to just the static position where you're just gonna hold in one place, okay? I'm gonna start. Give yourself a rest in between each of these. Uh, and now we're on to our last progression. And we're just going to hold a V-sit with our legs elevated. So do take rests between these. You can rest for 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever you need. And if you want to give yourself a little stretch out, you can always do a little cobra. Remember, same flattened low back position with your tailbone pointed straight to the floor, not at the corner of the wall over there. Ready? And try to keep your shins parallel to the floor if you can. If they're down here, that's okay too. Just remember trying to keep your low back as flat as possible. To make this harder still, you can stretch up into a full V position. But if you feel this rounding, come back. And if you feel this rounding in this position, go back to the floor scraping version. Five more seconds. Actually, not an even five, and we're done. Whew. All right, I'm going to take another cobra. All right, our final exercise is a plank. Plank is a really good isometric, that means not moving, a core stabilizer strengthener exercise. So we're going to do a front plank, and we're going to do a plank on each side, 30 seconds each. You can definitely extend this if you are uh, strong and you want to do longer planks. Uh, but for the sake of this workout, we're going to do 30 seconds each. Start with the front plank. <clears throat> you can definitely do this also from your elbows if you prefer. Uh, and if you want to challenge yourself, you can lift one leg at a time, or one arm at a time, or both. Okay? Whatever challenges you, just make sure that you are engaging that TVA and you're preventing yourself from sagging like this or piking up like this, okay? You want to have a flat line from the uh, crown of your head all the way to your heels. Okay, that's 30 seconds. Next up, side plank. Um, again, you can do this uh, from your hand if you like to up here, or you can do it from your elbow. Here we go. If you need to make this easier, you can Drop your bottom leg down so that uh, part of your body weight is resting on your lower leg, on your lower shin. And you can stack one foot in front of the other or stack your feet one on top of the other. And when we go to side two, I will show you the harder modifications. Eight more seconds. I'm going to show you how to make this even more challenging. Up you go. If you're ready for it, lift up that leg and do a starfish plank. Okay, whatever kind of plank you're doing, you should be feeling some tension in your lower leg, in your lower leg glute. Um, your inner thighs of both legs should be kind of squeezing together, zipping up, and helping to lift your hips up off the floor. Okay, three more seconds. Two, one, and we're done. Okay, having done all this work on our front, it's important to balance that out a little bit with some work on our backs. So um, here's an exercise that is a stabilizing move and um, it's not super intense, but it works you really hard, okay? So this is called a bird dog. And you simply, oops, I'm gonna go this side. <laughs> simply go hands and knees, and then you lift up opposite arm and leg at the same time and put them back down. Now what makes this challenging is trying to do this without moving around. So as you switch hand and knee, you want to do that with as little movement as possible. So you imagine you could balance 
a wine glass on each of your butt cheeks and you wouldn't spill your wine glasses when you're transitioning from side to side. Okay. Notice that I'm not lifting my leg up super high. I want you to keep your leg no higher than parallel to the floor. Same with your arm, okay? This is not about how much you can extend. It's about getting a flat position parallel to the floor all the way. Okay. Before we go any further, I want to make sure that you are watching this video over at rollerderbyathletics.com. The blog post that goes with this video uh, tells you a lot more information, some background, and also when and how often to do these exercises so that you don't underdo it and you don't overdo it. So make sure you head over to the website and also please leave me a comment and let me know which of these exercises you found the most challenging. I'm really curious to hear. So make a comment on the blog post at rollerderbyathletics.com. I'm putting the link here. All right, now we've spent several minutes strengthening our core. We're gonna stretch it out again because that's a really good habit to get into. So the first one I want you to do is a cobra. Lie down on your tummy. Put your hands next to your shoulders or just a little behind below your shoulders. Zip your legs together. I'm gonna to start my timer. And exhale as you lift using your back muscles to lift your shoulders up. Almost feel like you could lift your hands up here in this position. Okay, exhale, come back down. Now you're gonna push yourself further up. Keep your legs zipped together and strong. Now you're resting more of your body weight onto your hands, stretching yourself back up a little bit. You can wiggle back and forth a little bit if you want. And then as you come down, roll your spine, trying to lengthen it out across the floor in front of you. Great. And if you want to, come back for a little child's pose to stretch out your low back again. Okay, next up, we're going to do a hip flexor stretch on both sides. We're going to hold this for 30 seconds. So, lean forward, tilt your pelvis under. So try to point your tailbone at the wall in front of you. It's not possible to do, but that's what you're thinking about. And then just lean forward until you feel a stretch in front of your hip. Try to pull your, in my case, my left hip, try to pull this upper hip back and the rear hip forward so that they stay square so you're not out like this. You get that? All right, so holding that, if you want to, you can lift up an arm to get a little more stretch through here. And switching sides. Same thing, pelvic tilt, forward. Exhale, relax. I'm gonna lift my hand up. Tucking my pelvis really strongly the whole time. It's not a competition to see how far forward you can get. It's just tilting that pelvis until you feel a stretch in the front of your hip. Okay, we're strengthened and we're stretched. Hey, if you want to learn a whole bunch more exercises that are going to really work all of your core stabilization muscles, not just the front of your core as we've been doing today, but everything, all the way, your entire trunk, then I definitely recommend you check out the Core Builder program from Roller Derby Athletics. Uh, there's tons more information. I'm gonna put a link uh, in this blog post. And uh, it's a four week program that gives you a progression of exercises, most of which use a stability ball, a physio ball, to add a degree of instability to the workout. And it's a fantastic way to really accelerate your core strengthening. So check that out if you feel like you might need a little bit of extra boost with your core strengthening program. With that, that's your prehab for today. I'm Booty Quake, I just kicked your abs. Now you can go kick somebody else's. No, that doesn't really work. I just kicked your ass, now you can go kick somebody else's.